Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Welcome to another beautiful session of Knowing Allah. This is session five, alhamdulillah. And um, today we are going to learn um, uh, some more new names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are doing this program so that, you know, we can understand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala better, so that we can worship him and love him more. And, you know, um, when you understand somebody, we can, you know, uh, uh, love that person and, you know, uh, more when we know that person. If you don't know, it's so difficult to, you know, love someone. So, um, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even though he's not like, you know, people, um, uh, subhanallah, you know, getting to know him, um, will help us to love him and worship him better, inshallah. Uh, over to you, Sister Nuha. Jazakallah khair, Sister Hajira. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I seek refuge in Allah from the outcast shaytan. In the name of Allah, the beneficial, the merciful. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Everyone, um, Jazakallah khair for attending our fifth session of Knowing Allah. May Allah make this session a source of guidance for us all. Ameen. So inshallah, this class will be relatively shorter than our others. Inshallah, I hope to cover about eight more names today and do a little review quiz at the end. So may Allah help us achieve our goals. Um, I do have the window open. I don't, I don't know if it's very disturbing or there's a lot of disturbance, but let me know if it's okay or if I should close it, maybe. No, we don't hear any disturbance. Okay, okay, that's good. Okay, alhamdulillah. Okay, um, but before we get into our um, presentation for today, um, last class, a sister asked a question, um, and we had learned, we had just learned the name of Allah as Shaheed, which means the witness. Um, but Shaheed also refers to martyrs in Islam. So she asked how the word Shaheed or witness is related to martyrs. So a martyr is someone who stands firmly and sacrifices their life for their beliefs, right? Um, when someone becomes a martyr, they are so firm in their beliefs. It is, a, it is as if they witness and see the truth physically. So they witness the truth so firmly that they are prepared to fight and give up their life for the truth. And thus they become a martyr. So the word martyr essentially means witness. They are witnessing their beliefs and they are seeing their beliefs so strongly that they are willing to sacrifice their life for it. And in this way, they become a role model and an example for others um, worthy of being copied and worthy of being followed. So I hope that answers that question. I did get this answer on islam.org if any of you would want to read up more about it. But yeah, inshallah, with that, I think we can start today's lesson. So we can go to the next slide, inshallah. Okay, so the first thing we will be looking at is al-haq, which means the truth. So the Quran talks about this name of Allah 10 times. In Surah Nur, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, on that day, Allah will pay them their full just reward, and they shall know that Allah is the evident truth. So there are many layers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being the truth. For example, his word is the truth, the Quran and his messengers that spread the word of Allah, our meeting with him, our resurrection is truth, and his promise of heaven and hell is truth. And truth, by definition, is never changing. Truth is absolute and certain over all periods of time. And because the truth is something that never changes, only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the truth because his existence is enduring and it's forever. Everything but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will slowly deteriorate. So how can we trust in anything but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Luqman, that is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the truth. And what that they call upon other than him is falsehood. And because Allah is the most high, the grand. So there's also a surah in the Quran called Surah Haqqa, and it talks about all of the truths Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us. In the first section of the surah, it's all about the hereafter. And the second section is about the Quran being a revelation from Allah, and that Muhammad sallallahu is a true messenger of Allah. And in the surah, Allah also addresses the disbelievers who believe the Quran was written by a poet, or a soothsayer, or by Muhammad 
And this is actually a really beautiful story to read if you haven't read it before. The verses are very short and very easy, but it is really a surah that leaves you with goosebumps. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ends the surah by saying, this Quran is the absolute truth. So glorify in your name, your Lord, the greatest. So how can we apply this name Al-Haq to our lives? So today we are living in a changing world. We all know this. But no matter what changes may take place in this world, no matter what challenges, difficulties, or discoveries that we might encounter, the truth that is Allah is never going to change. It's the one thing that we can always rely upon. It's the one constant we can always rely upon. And we are in an age where wrong morals are viewed to be good and that good morals are viewed to be bad. And Islamic perspectives are against popularized views in the West, and it can be really difficult to navigate. And at times, we may find ourselves even questioning our own Islamic morals. But when we understand this name of Allah, understanding that Allah himself is the truth, it can really help us deal with these hard times. So when we understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the embodiment of truth, we are testifying that Allah's judgment and knowledge is perfect. And with this understanding, we should always adhere to the guidance, to the Quran that he set forth. And sometimes we may find restrictions that seem inconvenient or without any basis or cause, but we should realize that we don't always know what's best for us. And we should just trust that Allah, the haq, the truth, knows best and knows better than all of us and the whole world combined. So that was the name Al-Haq. Inshallah, we can go on to the next name now. Okay, so the next name we are going to be looking at is Al-Wakil, which means disposer of affairs. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Imran, say Allah is sufficient for us. Most excellent is he in whom we trust as disposer of our affairs. I love this name so much. Okay, so Allah in his infinite knowledge, in his power and wisdom, governs the affairs of all of the creation. He takes care of the affairs for everything, the living, the non-living, the believers, the disbelievers, the pious, the heedless, the grateful, the ungrateful. He manages the affairs of everyone and everything. And there is a special element of this name, though, that applies to those who are beloved devotees of Allah. Allah shows particular concern for those who put their full trust in him. And there is a hadith that um, where Muhammad وسلم, said, if they would only put their trust in Allah as they should, he would provide for them like he provides for the birds who fly out in the morning hungry and return fully satiated. So when we have proper awareness that Allah is al-wakil, the disposer of affairs, we fully entrust Allah with our concerns. We become completely accepting of his decree no matter what. And one of the greatest signs of faith is actually tawakkul. And tawakkul is a special word that means complete reliance on Allah, complete reliance on Allah to take care of all of your affairs. So when a believer has tawakkul, we try our very best, we do what's in our control, and then we leave the rest up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we say alhamdulillah, no matter what the result is. And because Allah, only Allah is unlimited in capacity and resources, and only Allah's existence is eternal. Only Allah has ultimate power. So he's the only one deserving of having all of our matters entrusted to him. He's the only one we should put our trust in. So how can we apply this name Al-Wakil in our lives? So one of the most beautiful examples of trusting in Al-Wakil in having tawakkul is the istikhara prayer. And the istikhara prayer is made when you're conflicted or if you need to make a decision and you're not really sure what to do. We recite a special istikhara dua where we ask Allah that if the matter is good for us, to make it easy for us. And if it is not good for us, to take it away from us. So doing the istikhara prayer is a beautiful way to be content with the decree of the al-wakil. And, you know, istikhara prayer does not have to be done for big life decisions. You can make it a habit to practice this in your daily life for big or small matters. And in fact, Muhammad وسلم, taught the companions to make istikhara in all things. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one we should rely on for help. And he's the only one who can take care of all of our affairs. 
And this name is also a really good name to think about and use in your du'as if you are anxious a lot or nervous a lot about the future. So learning to trust Allah has really helped me personally manage my anxiety because there's so much that is not in our control. So it's really easy to let panic set in. But subhanAllah, Allah always sorts out the affairs of everyone. We should become inspired by the story of Prophet Ibrahim Islam when he was thrown into a blazing hot fire. He said, Hasbi Allahu wa ni'mal wakil. Allah suffices me for he is the best disposer of affairs. And what did Allah do for Ibrahim Islam? He made the fire cool for him so that it didn't hurt Ibrahim Islam in any way. So to take to just understand things, Allah will not forsake you. And it'll take a bit of time to grow your tawakkul, to grow our trust in Allah. But once you have it, you can handle whatever comes your way because you know with certainty that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always with you and will always manage your affairs. He's never going to leave you alone. Okay, so that was the name Al-Wakil, the disposer of affairs. Okay, the next name we're going to be looking at is Al-Qawi, which means the most strong, the one with inexhaustible strength. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Dhariyat, O oh Allah, he is the provider, the most strong, the firm. So to be strong is a broader concept than just power or just physical strength. When we say that Allah is Al-Qawi, the most strong, we are actually testifying that Allah is perfect because he doesn't suffer from any weakness, whether it be in his sight, in his hearing, in his judgment or knowledge. He can provide whatever for whomever. And with regard to it, to Allah's life, it is absolutely enduring and forever. He is strong in every single aspect with no exceptions, right? And Allah tells us in Ayatul Kursi, neither drowsiness overtakes him nor sleep. So there really is no limit to his strength. Nothing tires him and nothing presents him even with the least difficulty. So the name al Qawi tells us about Allah's unlimited capacity, that nothing is outside his power and nothing can triumph over him. And Allah is so strong, nothing can stand as an obstacle to him. And this is why in the Quran, we often see this name in conjunction with other names. We see this name, Al-Qawi, in conjunction with Al-Aziz, which means the mighty. We see um, these two names, Al-Qawi and Al-Aziz, the mighty and the strong, when Allah talks about giving support to the believers against those who are unjust or against those who are tyrants. In Surah Hajj, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah will certainly aid those who aid his cause, for verily Allah is strong, the mighty. So because of his perfect strength, we only rely on him for our success. And given a choice between two leaders, you're going to likely choose the one whose power is unmatched, assuming that they're not morally corrupt. But similarly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has unlimited capacity and possesses superior judgment. He is the only one who could provide the comfort and protection we seek. And for this reason, this name is often mentioned with Al-Aziz, like we said, or Al-Mateen, which is we're going to learn about that name. Al-Mateen means the firm. So how can we use the name Al-Qawi, the most strong in our lives? So a good way to live by Al-Qawi is to be a strong believer ourselves. So just as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the all-knowing, he loves to see us knowledgeable. And just as he is the just, he loves to see us being just. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves to see the strength or the quality of strength or quwa in believers. Uh, Muhammad sallallahu wa sallam told us a strong believer is better and more beloved to Allah than a weak believer, though both are good. Hasten to what benefits you, seeking Allah's help, and do not feel defeated. If some misfortune befalls you, do not say, if only I had done such and such, but say, it is what Allah decreed, and he does as he wills. The words, if only, open the doors for shaitan's um, machinations. So this hadith tells us that Allah loves for the believers to possess strength as well. Strength in our faith, strength in our determination to promote good and forbid evil, strength in our efforts against shaitan, and strength in our character and strength in our will to seek knowledge. Allah loves the strong believers. And there is also a beautiful dhikr or remembrance that talks about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's strength that we can implement and really say a lot in our lives. 
and that is la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah there is no power and no strength except with allah and this phrase is considered to be a treasure of paradise so we should really strive to say this dhikr often and we should really recognize our inability and our weakness next to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's strength and power and be humble before allah every time we say this dhikr so that was the name al qawi the most strong the next thing we're going to be looking at is al matin and if you saw in um, actually this verse in Surah Dariyat mentions both Qawi and Al-Mateen together in conjunction. So when we say Al-Mateen, it means the firm one. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is firm and steadfast in his power. His power is the same as it was yesterday and it is the same as it will remain tomorrow. He is ever constant and firm. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Dariyat, O oh Allah, He is the provider, the most strong, the qawi, the firm, al mateen So the names al qawi the strong, and al mateen the firm, are often grouped together because they have very similar meanings, but there is a difference between them. So Imam al-Ghazali described it very well. He said, strength indicates perfect power, but firmness indicates the intensity of strength. So Al-Qawi refers to Allah's strength and that he possesses perfect power. And Al-Mateen also describes Allah's strength, but Al-Mateen focuses on the intensity of Allah's strength. Al-Mateen refers to the quality of being solid, unwavering, and unshakable. And we see the name Al-Mateen being paired with other names of Allah to, dis to describe how Allah's attributes are completely perfect and solid. So, for example, when Al-Mateen is paired with the name Ar-Razaq, Ar-Razaq means the provider. So when these two names are paired together, it means Allah's provision is firm. Nothing disrupts its flow and no force can disrupt or weaken Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's provision. Or when the name Al-Mateen is paired with the name Al-Qawi, the strong, it means Allah's strength is firm. Nothing can challenge or cause him difficulty. So it's generally stated that Al-Mateen is the perfection of his power and it can't be counteracted or resisted. Okay, so how can we apply this beautiful name Al-Mateen? So one way we can do that is be firm ourselves, be firm in following the straight path. And we should really let Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's attribute of firmness inspire us to stick with our deen at all times. And we should be determined to follow the straight path with understanding. And there are many ways that we can stay firm with Islam. We can hold tight to the Quran and strive to implement what we read. We can stay firm by doing as many good deeds as we can. We can stay firm by studying the lives of the prophets, peace be upon them, and follow their examples. And we can stay firm by thinking about the delights of paradise and the torture of the hellfire. And another thing, we should constantly and consistently ask Allah to keep us firm in our faith. Our hearts and iman are ever changing, and it is so easy to slip away from Islam, especially in this day and age. And subhanAllah, we ask, we should ask Allah. We actually do ask Allah every single day to keep us on the straight path and keep us firm, right? In Surah Fatiha, every time we pray, we are saying, keep us on the straight path. And there's also a beautiful dua that we can recite, um, asking Allah to keep us on the straight path. So it's here, Ya Muqallib al Qulub, Thabit Qalbi ala Dinik, which means, O oh, turner of hearts, make my heart firm upon your religion. SubhanAllah, this is such a beautiful dua. So we should ask the Al Mateen this dua as much as possible, inshallah. So that was the name Al Mateen, the firm one. Okay, so the next name we are going to be looking at is Al Wali. And there are actually a few different interpretations of the meaning of al-wali, like protector or patron. But the most common definition of al-wali is the protecting friend or ally. In Surah Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah is the ally of those who believe. He brings them out of the darkness into the light. So al-wali really refers to the attribute of Allah being a close friend or ally. He wants the believers to know that you're protected, supported, and looked after. And those are all the qualities we find in good friends for us. And Allah really provides us with peace and guidance and success in this life and the hereafter when we become his friends. 
And the most common way to look at our relationship with Allah is normally master and servant. But there are a group of people who are friends of Allah, his awliya. And it's so special to be considered a friend of Allah and it is such a high status. And the most well-known awliya or friends of Allah were the prophets, you see upon him. The awliya or the allies of Allah are people of faith who are people of faith and piety. And they're constantly aware that Allah is watching them in all of their affairs. So they really adhere to his commands and heed his prohibitions. And being a friend of Allah, it's not something that it's impossible for us to achieve. We don't have to be prophets to be a wali or be a friend of Allah. The answer is simple, but we just need to be consistent in our practice. So how do we become a friend of Allah? How do we attain this status? And this is essentially how we can apply this name in our lives as well. So in a hadith, Muhammad وسلم, said, Verily, Allah has said, whoever shows hate to a wali, a friend of mine, then I have declared war against him. And my servant does not draw near to me with anything more love to me than the religious duties I have obli obligated upon him. And my servant continues to draw near to me with nafil, with voluntary deeds, until I love him. And when I love him, I am his hearing by which he hears, his sight by which he hears, and his hand by which he strikes, and his foot by which he walks. Were he to ask something of me, I would surely give it to him. And were he to seek refuge in me, I would surely grant him refuge. So subhanAllah, just imagine having the status of being Allah's friend, having the Lord of all the world, the mighty creator, be your friend. And I want you guys to think of one of your close friends. Okay, so imagine if someone came up to them, maybe pushed them and said really mean things. What would you feel? Well, most of us would feel protective. We would want to push the other person back and maybe yell at them a bit too. But imagine if you have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as your friend and ally, Allah says he will declare war against the person who wronged you. Imagine just having Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on your side and helping you. That is being a friend of Allah. So how do we attain this friendship of Allah? The hadith told us, in order to come near to him, we have to fulfill our obligations toward him. So those are our prayers, our zakah, our fasting, and our hajj. But to become even closer to him, we have to go the extra mile and fill our time with nafil, the acts that go beyond the obligatory acts, all those voluntary acts. And it's not difficult to do non-obligatory acts of worship. In a hadith, Muhammad Sallallahu tells us that one of the most beloved acts to Allah is just to make a Muslim happy and to remove one of his troubles. So just you being a good friend to another Muslim is one of Allah's most beloved deeds. And that itself can increase your friendship with Allah and inshallah bring you to the status of being a friend or a wali of Allah. That was the name, Al-Wali, the friend. So Alhamdulillah, we have gone over five names so far, and we have another three more to go, inshallah. The next three names will hopefully be a bit more familiar to you, inshallah. But before we look at those, let's do a quick recap of what we've learned so far. So can anyone tell me a name and a meaning um, of a name that we went over today? Feel free to unmute yourselves or type in the chat. And if you're not sure or you don't remember anything, that's okay too. Sister Hajar said Al-Qawi. Yes, Al-Qawi. That was the third name we looked at. The most strong. Yes, Al-Qawi means the most strong. What was the name we learned that's normally in conjunction with Al-Qawi? We also learned Al-Wakil. Yes, disposer of affairs. Yes, Jazakallah Khair, Sister Shona. Al-Wali. Yes, the friend, the patron. Jazakallah khair, Sister Afia. Al-Haq, the truth. Yes, Jazakallah khair, Sister Sharina. And we have one more name, Al-Mateen. Yes, what does Al-Mateen mean? The firm one. Yes, it means the firm one. And we saw that Al-Qawi, the most strong, and Al-Mateen, the firm, are mostly paired together in conjunction to really affirm that Allah is the most strong. Okay, that's awesome. Alhamdulillah. So yes, these were the names that we learned. Al-Haq, the truth. Al-Wakil, the disposer of affairs. Al-Qawi, the most strong. Al-Mateen, the firm. And Al-Wali, the ally or friend. Okay, awesome.
Inshallah, we can go to the next slide then. Okay, so inshallah, the next thing that we are going to be looking at is al-hamid, which means the praiseworthy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Hud, the mercy of Allah and his blessings be upon you, O people of the house. Surely he is praiseworthy, glorious. So we actually say the root word hamd a lot in our life. And it is because that's the first verse of, in, in Surah Fatiha, right? Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. All praises be to Allah, Lord of the worlds. In fact, Surah Fatiha tells us exactly why Allah is the praiseworthy one, why we should praise Allah. So from Surah Fatiha, we understand that it is Allah who is the Lord of the words, the Rabbil Alameen. He's the one who gives us life. He's the one who gives us intellect and all of our blessings. And he surrounded us with beauty and love. And he is the Maliki Yomadin, the ruling judge on the day of judgment. He's also the ar rahman ar rahim the most beneficial and merciful to the believers and most beneficial and merciful to the all of creation. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is praiseworthy because of his perfect attributes. And Surah Fatiha also has many names like the seven oft recited verses, the medicine, the shifa, but it's also known as Alhamd, the praise. Okay, so everything and everyone in creation is always extolling Allah's praises. All animals praise Allah. The believers praise Allah happily of their own free will. Even those who deny Allah praise him and they're doing so by just existing because their own existence testifies to Allah's creative power, his grace and his forbearance. And all of the praises that the angels, the prophets and the rest of creations offer to Allah is nothing compared to the praise that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deserves. Okay, so how can we apply the name Al-Hamid in our lives? The best way to do this is by saying and also knowing the virtues of the word Alhamdulillah or the words Alhamdulillah. So when we say Alhamdulillah, it means all types of praise and every manner of thanks is all due to Allah. And Abu Jafar bin Jarir actually said, the meaning of Alhamdulillah is all thanks are due purely to Allah alone not of any objects that are being worshipped instead of him, nor any of his creation. So really, Alhamdulillah is a perfect and beautiful praise that is deserved for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only. And saying Alhamdulillah offers many benefits to us. Muhammad sallallahu told us that the best dhikr is la ilaha illallah and the best supplication is Alhamdulillah. And he also told us that the phrase Alhamdulillah fills the scale. It'll fill our scale of good deeds on the day of, day, day of judgment. So try your best to say Alhamdulillah as much as possible when you're out and about or if you're cleaning up the house or you're 33 times right after your salah. Increase in saying this beautiful praise in your daily life and say it out of deep love, out of honor and humility and gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we should strive to say Alhamdulillah when something good happens to us. And we should also say Alhamdulillah when something bad happens to us. Because as believers, we know that everything happens for good and happens for a reason, even if it seems bad in the moment. So for the believers, it is always a win-win situation and we should always say Alhamdulillah no matter what. And the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu actually said, the affair of a believer is amazing. The whole of his life is beneficial and that is only in the case of the believer, because when good times come to him, he is thankful and it is good for him. And when bad times befall him, he is patient and it is also good for him. So really reflect on this hadith and this hadith really allows us to say, Alhamdulillah kulli hal, Alhamdulillah for every case or situation. So that was the name Alhamid. And you can really remember it by just saying, thinking of Alhamdulillah. So that should be an easy way to remember the name, inshallah. Okay, these are the last two names that we are going to be looking at today. Um, Al-Wahid and Al-Ahad. Both of these names actually refer to the one. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in, he says the name Al-Wahid in Surah Baqarah, he says, and your God is one God. There is no God except for him, 
the beneficial, the merciful. And in Surah Ikhlas, Allah says, he calls himself the Al-Ahad. He says, Qul huwa Allahu Ahad, say he is Allah, the one. So both of these names describe Tawheed or oneness of Allah, but there is a slight difference between these names. So Al-Wahid refers to Allah as the numerical one. He is one in number. He is not two. He is not three. He has no partner. He is the one and only God. And this is the starting point of what it means to be a Muslim, right? Because the core belief from which everything stems is a shahada. We testify, la ilaha illallah. There is no God but Allah. There is only one God. Um, but on the other hand, al-Ahad takes oneness of Allah one step further. So al-Ahad describes the uniqueness of Allah, the fact that nothing compares to him. And we've learned some names and attributes like the hearing, the seeing, the knowing, but we know that these attributes can describe human beings as well. We also see, we also hear, and we also know things, but our senses are very limited. Our sight, our hearing, and knowledge is limited. We can't hear a conversation in another house, and we can't see through walls. But when we describe these traits to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is limitless. He is perfect. He is the all-seeing, the all-hearing, and all-knowing. There is nothing similar to him. He is absolutely unique. That's why he is the al-ahad, the unique one, the unique in all of his attributes. So he is the one, al-wahid, who has no partner. And he is the one, al-ahad, who is unique and incomparable in his attributes and in his actions in every way. And because of these two names, we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is worthy of worship. All other worship is false, and our hearts should turn to him alone in love and devotion and in hope. Okay, so how can we apply these names in our lives? So knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one and the only should really inspire us to dedicate all of our worship solely to Allah. When we understand this attribute of Him, his, we should be motivated to pray directly to Allah without including any intercessors or associates because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has no equal partner. He is one. And you know, one of the best ways to use the name Al-Ahad in your life is with Surah Ikhlas. Surah Ikhlas is a very beloved surah. In a hadith, Muhammad sallallahu said, is any of you incapable of reciting a third of the Quran in a night? And the companions asked, how could someone recite a third of the Quran in a single night? And Muhammad sallallahu said, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ is equal to one third of the Quran. SubhanAllah, just reciting four ayat every night is equivalent to reading one third of the Quran. And Surah Ikhlas, along with Surah Falaq and Surah Nas, are protection from evil and black magic. Every night, Muhammad, before Muhammad Sallallahu went to bed, he would recite Surah Ikhlas, Surah Falaq, and Surah Nas three times. He would cup his hands together and he would blow on them and rub his hands all over his body. And that's because these three surahs are very powerful together. Muhammad Sallallahu told us to recite Surah Ikhlas and Surah Falaq and Surah Nas three times in the morning and three times in the evening. And he told us it will suffice you in all respects, meaning it will protect you from all kinds of evil. So Surah Ikhlas is very beneficial for us. It has the name Al-Ahad in it and it should be a part of our daily routine. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala make it easy for all of us to implement this. Okay, so alhamdulillah, we've gone over eight new names today. Um, go to the next slide. But yeah, alhamdulillah, we've been over eight new names today. Um, we can just click the slide, I think. Uh, there we go. So these are the last three names that we went over. Al-Hamid, the praiseworthy. Al-Wahid, which is the numerical one, the one and only, the one and only God, and Al-Ahad, the unique one. So now that we've kind of reviewed all of the names, I've made a small quiz on Menti for us to do together. So I'm going to share my screen for that. Um, Menti is just like Kahoot, but unfortunately Kahoot has become very exclusive for some reason, and you need to create, uh, have a membership to uh, make quizzes now. I don't know, it's a whole thing. But I made a mentee instead. So inshallah, I'll share my screen and then can oh, hold on. 
Okay. Okay. Can you guys see this? Just let me know. I can see it now. Okay, alhamdulillah. So you can go to menti.com and enter the code 4420016. And this little number here will let me know how many people are in the room, inshallah. Menti.com. Four two zero zero one six. Okay, I just entered, I think. Okay, good. How do we know that I have entered? Like, you know, does it say? Anything? Oh, um, here, actually, we can go to the next slide. Okay, it says enter your name. Okay. Yeah. Oh, this on me. Okay. Shall we have a lot of people here today. I hope we can get some more players on the screen. Inshallah. It's only five questions. It's very, very straightforward. And it's just everything that we've already learned today, inshallah. So hopefully this will really help solidify most of the things. That I we've am learned. not able to enter. Um, You're not able to enter? Okay, here, the code is up here. Uh, let me try again. Bismillah. It's menti.com, not dot org. I'm I'm not sure if that makes a difference. Menti.com four 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 two zero zero one six. Okay, I submitted the code. Uh, am I supposed to press anything here? Uh no. And we're all here, all this watermelon. I am the watermelon there. Okay, that's good to know. Let's take a ready face. Okay. Oh, uh, so it's in, uh, uh, Sister Annie says if we can share the link and the passcode here. Okay, I will type it here. Jazakallah khair, Sister Yeah, Sister Nimera says, sorry for arriving late. I won't join the quiz as I have to leave shortly. Jazakallah khair for this amazing class. You're most welcome, Sister Nimera. I'm glad you were able to join us. Mashallah. I mean for your beautiful duas. Okay, so we are all ready. So I think we can if start. We're ready. Had a banana. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm waiting for some more players to join in. Inshallah. Should we wait a little more, or should we? How many we have? Um, uh, uh, many things I don't remember, but you know, it's good to just give it a go and then learn because over here it's um, in Menti, we won't even know like who's joined and you know who's playing, so it's is just a learning opportunity. So we can all, yeah. you know, have a go on it. Yes. Okay, okay, sister Afia, <laughs> okay, I think okay. Inshallah, you may start the game, sister. Okay. Okay, our first question, how can we apply the name Al-Ahad, the one in our lives? So we can do more voluntary good deeds, we can say SubhanAllah more often, or we can recite Surah Ikhlas more often. So you just have to choose. Oh, I think the time settings are very, um... okay, there we go. Yes, the answer was recite Surah Ikhlas more often. And that's because, remember, it says, Qul huwa Allahu Ahad. Al-Ahad is the, in the first line of Surah Ikhlas. And we talked about the benefits of reciting Surah Ikhlas a lot. So yeah, so this is the one way we could apply the name Al-Ahad in our lives. Okay, awesome. Okay, next question. What is the best way to become a wali or a friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Do more voluntary deeds instead of our obligation? Do voluntary deeds in addition to our obligations? Say dhikr or remembrances often? Or make dua that Allah makes us firm on our faith?
Yes, do voluntary deeds in addition to our obligations. Yes, and we remember that because there was a hadith, right, that talked about Allah would declare war on anyone who would harm one of his friends, right? And then Allah explained the best way to become closer to him, fulfill all the obligations, and then go the extra mile and do voluntary good deeds. So yeah, alhamdulillah. Good to see everyone. Most everyone remembers that one. Alhamdulillah. Okay, I'm not sure why it asks everyone if everyone's ready before the next question, but I guess it's okay. Okay. Al-Wakil means the disposer of affairs. What does tawakkul mean? So does tawakkul mean complete reliance on Allah to take care of your affairs? Does it mean becoming a friend of Allah? Or does it mean believing in ourselves and believing in our abilities? Yes, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, everyone got that one right. So complete reliance on Allah to take care of your affairs. And we talked about how having tawakkul, nothing can really bother you at the end of the day because you know everything that Allah does is for your benefit and even things that seem bad are also for your benefit. And Allah will take care of you no matter what. Okay, alhamdulillah. We have just two more questions. Okay, what is the difference between al-wahid and al-ahad? Al-wahid, the only one. Al-ahad, the unique one. Number two, al-wahid, merciful to everyone. Al-ahad, merciful to the believers. Or three, al-wahid, the truth. And al-ahad, the only truth. Yes, alhamdulillah. Al-wahid is the only one. And al-ahad is the unique one. Awesome, alhamdulillah. Last question. What surah has a derivation of the word al-hamid, the praiseworthy? Is it surah nas, surah ikhlas, or surah fatiha? Yes, it is surah fatiha. Remember we talked about surah fatiha? Another name for surah fatiha was alhamd. But also in the first line, we say, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. All praises are due to Allah, Lord of all the worlds. So yes, it's Surah Fatiha. I know sometimes you get confused with a Surah Ikhlas because we talked about Surah Ikhlas having um, Ahad. But that was Ahad, not al -hamid. They sound very similar, but they're very different words. Alhamdulillah, we can see who was the highest. Oh, it doesn't really... Oh, wow. That was interesting. Oh, mashallah. Sister Roha, Jazakallah khair. Sister Roha won. I think she answered the fastest. That's awesome. That was very interesting how they calculated the points. I think they added how fast you are as well. Very cool. Okay, Jazakallah khair, everyone. Jazakallah khair. I played the menti, uh, dot com, and I think I like it. It's really nice. Alhamdulillah. And um, when I made a mistake, it didn't show that I made a mistake. <laughs> Those are my mistakes. So, so <laughs> yeah, this is my first time with this menti.com. I like it, mashallah. Jazakallah khair. Huh? Well, yeah, Kali, inshallah, then we can stick with menti in the future. Yeah, it doesn't um, show if you like got something wrong and stuff. But yeah, alhamdulillah. And also, I, uh, even by making mistakes, I, I learned a lot, mashallah. Um, yeah, no. Yeah. Yeah. The best way to learn is to make mistakes. I personally remember better when I made a mistake on a test or made a mistake on a quiz. I always remember that one then. So yeah, inshallah. Um, Sister Hajar, could we share the PowerPoint again? I think there was just another thing I wanted to share and then we can do um, a Q&A session, inshallah. So we can go to the next slide. Oh, these were all the names that we learned today. We can just go through them really quickly. So Al-Haq, the truth, like Surah Haqqa, which talks about all the truths in the Quran. Al-Wakil, the disposer of affairs. We talked about having tawakkul, meaning complete reliance on Allah to take care of all of our affairs. Al-Qawi, the most strong. Al-Mateen, the firm. Al-Wali, the ally, the friend, becoming a friend of Allah. Al-Hamid, the praiseworthy, like Al-Hamd, Alhamdulillah. Al-Wahid, the numerical one, and Al-Ahad, the unique one. And we learned about Surah 
um, ikhlas and how it has qul huwa allahu ahad in it. Okay, alhamdulillah. Let's go to the next slide. Um, I, oh, I mean, okay, let's go to the next slide. One more. But yeah, I just wanted to put this up. I realized I hadn't included a slide of my sources and it's been the fifth session. So I feel really bad about that. Um, but these are the sources I've been using for these um, lectures. Um, the two books I use is In the Company of God by Sylvan al oada and Who is Allah by Sakina. Um, I don't know how to pronounce her last name, so I'm not going to try. Um, but yeah, In the Company of God, SubhanAllah, it's a really, really good book. And um, if you want to kind of like review or learn all you've done, that is a really, really good book to go through. It's very simple English and it explains all of the names um, that Allah has described himself with in the Quran. And also the websites I used was myislam.org and understand.quran.com. So all of these four, I kind of used them to make um, all the material. Alhamdulillah. May Allah bless um, these authors. Alhamdulillah. But yeah, Alhamdulillah, that is everything from my part today. Inshallah, if anyone has any questions or any comments, feel free to type them in the chat. But yeah, Jazakallah khair, everyone. Jazakallah khair, Nuha, for another beautiful session of uh, Knowing Allah. Um, sisters, if you have any questions, um, uh, anything at all, uh, you know, just um, you can type in a chat or you can open your mic and, you know, uh, let us know. Uh, anything that you didn't understand in today's class, uh, inshallah, we can go over it again if you like. Mashallah, it's wonderful to see you all here. And mashallah, sisters have said, Sister Sharina says, Jazakallah khair. Sister Alicia says, Jazakallah khair. Inshallah, we're going to have a, a class next Saturday of Knowing Allah as well. And after that, we are planning to do a program on Zul Hijjah, uh, you know, the month of Zul Hijjah. Uh, Sister Meher says, beautiful session. May Allah accept your efforts. Amin, Ya Rab. Sister Roha Iqbal says, Jazakallah khair for the session and may Allah bless our efforts. Amin, Ya Rab. Amin for your beautiful duas. Um, inshallah, we'll see you again uh, next Saturday, same time, um, you know, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 2 p.m. Central Time for another uh, beautiful session of Knowing Allah. And I hope uh, and I pray that uh, Sister Noha, I know she's a busy student, um, that she gets time to, you know, uh, complete uh, all the 99 names of Allah uh, so that we can, uh, you know, uh, understand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, better. Jazakallah uh, khair. If you do not have any questions, then I'm going to end the session here. I'm, I will recite a small dua. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika nashhadu Allah ilaha illa ant nastaghfiruka wa natu bilaik. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Wal asr inna al-insana lafi khusr إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَتَوَاسَوْا بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاسَوْا بِالصَّبْرِ السلام علیکم ورحمت اللہ وبرکاتہ وآلیکم السلام ورحمت اللہ وبرکاتہ